Hi, my name is Julia Coleman. I'm a PGY-5 general surgery resident at University of Colorado. We're appreciative to JAX for the opportunity to share our work. Hypertonic saline has been employed as a resuscitative agent in trauma historically due to its ability to increase intravascular space with low volume resuscitation. However, the results of preclinical trials with 7.5% hypertonic saline suggest an increased mortality in trauma patients. The proposed mechanism for this increased mortality is due to an exacerbation of trauma-induced coagulopathy. Despite the suspected adverse effects of hypertonic saline on coagulation, boluses of 23.4% hypertonic saline remain a standard of care in TBI patients. So we became interested in the effects of 23.4% on coagulation, hypothesizing that the use of hypertonic saline results in progressive impairment of hemostatic capacity. First, blood was collected from healthy adult volunteers and citrated native tag was performed. Blood was diluted with either normal saline or hypertonic saline at an equivalent dose of 2.5% blood dilution, which is comparable to administering three doses of hypertonic saline, as would be done in a TBI patient. And then a dose response curve was created with 5 and 10% whole blood dilution. We then performed a murine model without and then with a weight drop TBI, looking at the effects of hypertonic saline on coagulation by TAG and tail bleeding time. For our results, at 2.5% blood dilution, there was no significant difference in angle or fibrinolysis, but hypertonic saline resulted in shortening of R and an increase in MA. However, at 5% blood dilution, hypertonic saline significantly prolonged R and decreased angle in MA. And at 10% blood dilution, there was a complete flat line of the TAG. In our mirroring model, without and with TBI, there was no significant difference in any TAG measurement between normal saline and hypertonic saline groups at any time point nor tail bleeding time. In summary, these data ultimately suggest safety of hypertonic saline use, but excessive dilution data suggests that caution should be exercised when employing serial hypertonic saline boluses to reduce intracranial hypertension in patients with TBI.